Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast video for South America brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the satellite-derived precipitation as viewed here uh, over time, starting back on the 17th. On Thursday's video, I'm going to give you the total uh, uh, numbers here after we've seen both last week and this week's precipitations. So we'll kind of keep this narrative going. But as I click play here, starting on the 17th, that was when that stalled out front became apparent over Argentina, so heavy rains in through here. The monsoon was a bit weaker farther to the north, but we saw repeated weak fronts coming through Argentina all the way through the day uh, yesterday, and even more storms in there today. So if we take a look at Argentina, which we, you know, remember this was an area that was hammered by uh, drought and extreme heat at times in January and even late December. We now look back over the last five days now. Remember, this only goes through the 20th, so there's been four more days of rain in here, and you can see how wet it's been in this area. Now, if I could highlight that same region that was under you know such d d terrible drought up until this point, it was kind of the same area. I mean, the Parana River flows in through here. We've taken a look at the river levels being so low, uh, and now we've all of a sudden put down a lot of precipitation, including a lot of flooding in parts of Uruguay in pockets of Argentina. Now, another way to kind of just look at this, um, I want to show you, again, one of my favorite sites here, worldagweather.com. Uh, as we come in here, I, I picked out Argentina and Cordoba. And that would be, um, just as a quick reminder, that's about right here, okay? You can see that some of the heavy precipitation just over the last couple of days has really just brought those rainfall totals back closer. Now, that's bringing in a lot of rain on a short amount of time, and this, of course, causes a lot of issues with runoff and things like that. But overall, we would consider that to be a, a more positive signal. Let's check in on two other areas. First, Buenos Aires, if we just slide over here, they're now above average on precip. And let's go up there toward that um, uh, Parana River in Santa Fe. And you can see the recovery that's happened as of late in this area as well. So Argentina, and this was pretty well forecast by the model, has got a pretty big drink of rain. Now we go north of there. Let's start pretty far to the north in Mato Grosso. With the weakening of the monsoon as of late, okay, you can see that we've dropped off in precip. But as we've been discussing, this is kind of well timed with harvest of the first crop of soybeans and uh, the planting of the safrina crop, which in both senses are right about on the five year average. Now, from there, though, I want to slide a little bit farther uh, east first over to Minas Gerais, a place that was very wet back in January, but has since dried off a little bit. And let's go south. Uh, let's go to Parana first. Parna has had a lot of scattered storms, but you can see that from the CPC, it's not as though we've managed to keep the very wet conditions we saw back here in, in you know about a week ago. And so we're still sitting on a pretty sizable deficit in that area. So I'm gonna pay attention to Parna here in a few moments. And then let's go down all the way into far southern Brazil to Rio Grande do Sul. And again, we need to bring more moisture into this area to help relieve the drought. So as we look over the next 10 days, this is what we've got. So notice southern Mato Grosso do Sul and Parna are gonna see two fronts that are gonna get stalled out here, bringing in some wetter weather. That area near Santa Fe along the Parana River goes over a bit drier as we go forward, and the monsoon starts to make its return. But I've got questions about that monsoonal circulation longer term. I'll address that in a few moments. First, let's at least just look at what the 12Z Euro came up with today uh, and the forecast. So as we play this forward through the day tomorrow on Tuesday, getting into Wednesday. You saw it right there. That's the front that's advancing, putting down some more heavy rainfall. That front eventually makes it to the north. See, it's kind of strung out right here, getting into Rio Grande do Sol, Paraguay, Santa Catarina, and then it's really putting a lot of heavy rain up against the, um, the Andes Mountains. Then the front, by the time we get into Friday, is sitting right here and bringing in some precipitation to those very dry fields in Mato Grosso do Sol and Parana and it's gonna to try to just stay there. Look, this is going into the weekend, like Saturday and Sunday, and what do we see? We kinda of see this lingering front sitting in this area. Now, I played this out to next Sunday. Do you care if I do it again real quick? Because I want you to look farther north. Watch the monsoon regain its strength and position. I'll just go through it. Do you see it starting to curl around? That monsoonal circulation comes through like this, and now you can see that better as we just play through, again, the weekend. Now what happens is for Argentina is after this rain came through, we do go over to a drier time period late this week and into the weekend. And with that drier air back in place, we're going to wait on when that next front comes through. The models are attempting right now to produce another weak front that comes through next Monday, okay, maybe into next Tuesday. But the same front in the models tends to stall out once again over this area. And that's been pretty well resolved for a while in some of the longer range forecasts. Now, speaking of longer range forecasts, this is what we need to be thinking about. First of all, 
you can see that our best velocity potentials right now are right in through here, right in through here, and later in through there. These three areas are what I'm keeping an eye on, specifically this area right there, because that seems to be lining up over phases five and six. And what do you notice out here when you look out at that point? The day six through 10 time period has got a lot of rising motion here. Uh, and we're also seeing some sense of it there, but there's gonna be a lag. If the MJO stays over here, maybe pops out into phase five, all right, which is a possibility, and I'll tell you why. Because the trade winds, once this reloads, and I apologize, I got really slow internet in this hotel that I'm staying in tonight. There we go, the trade winds are once again quite strong in this part of the Atlantic, or, uh, Pacific, excuse me. And we're getting that convergence and rising motion over phase five. Now, why I'm bringing this up is because when we look historically, Phase five tends to, once again, weaken the monsoon. Now, it's not in phase five now. It's collapsed right now. But should it emerge, in, emerge into phase five, I will get concerned about that. The models out there for week two are doing this. Ready? This is this week. We've already discussed this. But as we play forward, let's take you out here now. This is day four through 10. And as we go out there, let's just look fully at day seven through 14, which ends right there. And you can see that those stalled out fronts are producing pretty good precipitation over drier fields in southern Brazil and eastern Brazil. But notice this. I believe what we're seeing there is a signal, maybe from the MJO coming out in phase five, producing some subsidence. At the same time, the Antarctic Oscillation, also called the Southern Annular Mode, goes back over positive. And that could help reduce in this area the frequency of fronts. They may just stall out and stay in this area. And that's actually been in the models for a long time with the long range forecast. The ECMWF has performed, in my opinion, very well in South America so far this growing season. But let's take a look even longer than that, all right? Because when you look historically at the fading La Nina, and again, it would just give you a quick reminder, this La Nina, let's look at those latest ocean temperatures here. This La Nina, right, is, is currently got strong trade winds here, but no upwelling. So it's mostly an east-focused La Nina, all right, but it's still very much present. Well, now we look at those years when we had La Ninas that faded throughout February and March. See them down here? And we put them all together, and we look out there beyond March and say, does the monsoon slow down, or does it eventually shut down? And the models here are suggesting that a big, big portion of Brazil's northern and eastern growing areas Historically, when looking at all those marches to Mays, tends to be on the drier side of things. And there's a concern that in this area, I'll put a D there, that we could run out of monsoonal moisture early. That means that planting pace of the safrina crop is absolutely critical. Now that's March to May. What do we have before that? Well, this is how things look basically through the month of February to early March. I'm getting still some hint of MJO phase five. See that? I mean, it's pretty far north. The models want to stall out fronts here, but notice they've picked back up on a drier bias once again here. So could the rains we're dealing with here in the near term be a temporary thing? I certainly see that as a possibility, especially for southern Brazil and Argentina. But a lot of things kind of hang in the balance of some transition between La Nina, the MJO, and the Antarctic Oscillation. And I don't feel as though predictability is too terribly high right now, given that all of them are kind of currently in a state of flux. The AAO going back toward a neutral value, the MJO collapsing, and the La Nina still giving us strong trade winds in the Western Pacific, but having an east-focused temperature pattern. See what I'm saying? So I think we're going to have to watch this carefully because I don't think we're out of the woods yet for more risk looking longer term, impacting the South American crop and taking away its potential. So I'll stop it there. Appreciate your attention. We'll give you an update on Thursday. Thank you.